Hey everyone, thanks for joining in to this talk where we're going to be talking about what it's like to study computer science degrees at the University of Lincoln. Uh, and so, my name is Kieran Hicks, uh, I'm a lecturer at the university um, where I mainly kind of uh, deliver on the games related modules in computer science, um, although I do sometimes also teach on some of the other modules. Um, before I started lecturing, I ran a independent games company um, and also freelanced um, for some slightly bigger studios. Um, and so I bring this perspective through when I'm teaching. So one of the things that I wanted to cover today is uh, actually what to expect when you come to university to study computer science. Um, and so obviously, first things first, you will learn how to code. Um, hopefully that seems obvious to everyone, um, but again, you know, at University of Lincoln, we're proud of the way that we teach code, essentially, and that we teach you the programming fundamentals. We don't go out trying to teach you a specific language. You will learn languages like Python and C Sharp um, and C++ as you go through your degree, but the core of it is we teach you the programming fundamentals, um, and that allows you really to learn any language. So computer science is part of everything in the world nowadays, and I'm sure this doesn't come as a surprise to you. Um, and this feeds into the approach that we take at the University of Lincoln um, in that how we teach computer science. And so as I previously mentioned, we teach you how to code, um, but we also will teach you a solid set of problem solving skills, because again, a lot of the real world problems that we currently face can be solved with computer science. Um, so it's important to have a, a solid base of, of how those problem solving skills work and how you can apply them. Um, and then lastly, you know, we make sure you have strong teamwork skills. We make sure that you've developed them throughout the course of your degree. Um, Near enough, every software development job or role will require some sort of teamwork skills nowadays, right? You know, you've got the days of coders working in isolation. Everything is now done in teams. So again, we bring that to the kind of forefront of how we outline on and design our degrees so that you know you will develop a really strong set of teamwork skills. And so computer science is constantly evolving um, and that's reflected again in, in our courses and that many of the programs we deliver will change um, year on year based on the needs of the industry. Uh, and we do this to ensure that you get a job. Um, and so, for example, you know, right now we're going through a, a boom of cloud computing where, you know, there's a lot of jobs that require graduates to have some, some skills with cloud-based computing. Um, and so now our degree has that kind of interspersed throughout. Um, but I think the, the core thing that you kind of should get from a university level degree um, is how to learn independently, right? We will kind of teach you that way of, of knowing what you need to learn and how you can go and approach that learning and figuring out how you yourself best learn. Um, and because of this, you know, our, our courses are what we call agile. Um, and so in the software development industry, that's kind of a, a term used for being flexible and adaptable to change. Um, and that's something that our students end up becoming as well. So let's have a look at the two different programs that we uh, deliver at the University of Lincoln. So the first course on the left is our kind of computer science core course. Um, and so on this program, you will learn basically everything you need to be a software developer uh, or to study computer science further. Um, and so this includes things like AI, uh, algorithms, databases, web applications, um, cloud-based computing and a whole host of other kind of different topics um, and it will give you a really nice well-rounded robust skill set. Um, then on the right we have the games computing program that we deliver um, and so this program actually shares a few modules with the computer science program um, so you pick up a lot of the core computer science fundamentals that you need as a software developer um, but then what's spliced in that degree is lots of different games related modules. Um, so you will learn some low level graphics programming, you will learn some engine based development using Unreal and Unity, um, you will learn some kind of enemy AI behaviors and kind of stuff like that in the AI module. Um, and basically you will develop a slightly more specific skill set 
um, than the computer science program um, that's applicable to games. Um, but I think the, the core thing to mention here is that you still will come out with a really solid understanding of computer science because you share some of those core modules. And that, yeah, you could actually still go for a, a typical software dev job or a games related job with that degree. Um, so yeah, let's actually talk about the different career options that might be available to you. Um, so this is based on my personal experience with students that I have taught. Um, and so, you know, we found that our comp sci graduates um, have gone on to be senior software engineers at Samsung. Um, we've seen them work uh, on basically procedural generation elements um, at Rockstar Games in Edinburgh. Um, and we've also seen some students go off and do secret stuff they're not allowed to talk about um, for the Ministry of Defense. Um, and so I've picked these three as an example because they're actually, um, they're three very different job roles. Um, and yet, you know, our graduates, they all went through the same course and they all went in different career directions. Um, I think this highlights actually, you know, how well-rounded the skill set you kind of get for our degrees um, is and then how it can be applied to basically whichever kind of job role or career trajectory you kind of feel like um, traversing. Um, so enough about this, let's actually talk about some of the interesting applications of computer science. Because um, I think, you know, a, your kind of uh, year group, you probably understand computer science mainly to be, you know, some, some programming, maybe like Python programming. Um, and maybe some, you know, some fundamentals like Boolean architecture and stuff like that. Um, but it's actually much more than that. Um, and so I've got this little, um, I guess, question here. I'm just going to read it out loud, which is, the triangle is to the right of the square. The square is to the right of the circle. And then I ask you this question, what shape is in the middle? So if you read for that statement, what shape would be in the middle? Now, this is actually quite a challenging task because you have to kind of think about it inside, you, know, you have to visualize the triangle, the square, and the circle in your head and figure out where they are. Um, hopefully people have had enough time to go through this, so I'm just gonna move to the next slide. Um, and so here, this is the exact same question, right? What is the shape in the middle? But this time around, we actually have the visuals showcasing us these shapes. Now I imagine most of you found this version of the question significantly easier, right? Because you had those visuals. Um, and so obviously for, for people that maybe didn't get the answer, the square is the shape that's in the middle. But why is this so much easier to see? And this is actually a kind of design principle, right? And it's one of those things when we consider how humans interact with computers, which is an important part of a computer scientist's job, um, you know, you have to consider how you present that information to the users. Um, and so this is actually a kind of uh, falls into some different design principles. Uh, one of those being like computational offloading. So basically how the, the representations of something affect how much cognitive effort is required to complete that task. And you'll see this all the time in all of the different um, you know, web apps and mobile phone applications um, and tools and systems you use in a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and it's something that's studied quite, quite heavily by computer scientists. Um, um, it actually guides how we might make our programs, our different software tools, because um, we can consider that people are typically already using tons of resources uh, and memory just in their day-to-day -day activities. Um, so, you know, if they're already using a computer, that is a task that already requires some, some cognitive demand. Um, and then if you're asking them to do something on top of that, that requires even further cognitive demand. And we need to consider that when we're designing our games, our software tools, our websites. Um, and I also want to talk about this idea of brain-computer interfaces. Um, and so this is you know, a, a subsection of computer science where we use different kind of tools and uh, measures to scan people's brains. Um, for, for all kinds of different purposes. And so there you can see in the image they're wearing an EEG cap. Um, and what that does is basically it's, it's scanning uh, the electrical signals that are going through their brain whilst in this instance they're playing a game. Um, and so we can actually use that for all kinds of really interesting things. We can use it for entertainment, um, but we can actually use it for medical purposes as well. So it can 
um, be used to allow people to control um, prosthetic arms or prosthetic limbs, for example, where we can you know use a brain scan, we can figure out when they're trying to move an arm, and we can actually move their prosthetic arm with that that information we're um, collecting from the brain scan. It can be used in education to kind of help see how people are retaining information. Um, and it's also just used in kind of, yeah, science and research in general. There's a lot of different kind of work going on looking at how brain computer interfaces can be used to control um, bigger tools and systems such as car manufacturing. Um, and then another aspect of computer science is accessibility and so you know we can use um, the different kind of tools that computer science affords us to make experiences more accessible um, so here in this image you can actually see um, a game being played by someone in a wheelchair um, and so we're using the Kinect um, which is basically a, a really high fidelity camera and we're using that to actually track that person's position in the game through you know how they're sitting in a wheelchair and the position of the wheelchair and we're using that to control the game. And that actually lets people that might not have fine motor controls, so they can't hold controllers in the standard way, um, to still play games for using their wheelchair and their body as a controller. So that helps increase the accessibility of the game. Um, again, that can be used in entertainment, but it can also be used in medical areas or it can be used for education and generic research again. So I thought it might be nice just to talk through what maybe a typical week for a student would look like um, studying even you know computer science or games computing. Um, and so typically you have between 12 and 15 hours um, of lectures and workshops each week. So those lectures are kind of like uh, seminars where you know it's you're sat in a lecture hall and the lecturer is talking through different topics, um, and then the the workshops. Um, are a bit more hands-on, that's when you're in, the, in our labs and you're actually going through and coding stuff uh, and working on assignments. Um, and I think the interesting thing to point out is that when you're studying for your degree, you're normally being taught lots of different topics at once. Um, so, you know, at any one time you might have up to four modules um, and those modules could be, you know, you could be doing a module on AI, you could be doing a module on uh, maths for computing, and you could be doing a games design module all at the same time um, during that week, right? So you're, you kind of dart between lots of different topics. And so that's, that's really good, right? Because it helps make you nice and well-rounded and you have a good skill set in lots of different applicable areas. Um, and so typically one of the questions I get asked by uh, students when they're thinking about maybe going to university in the future is you know what do people struggle with what what's typically difficult um, and so you know the answer to these questions uh, varies for each each individual student but what I can say from from my kind of experience um, with you know teaching students now for a few years is that um, I think most students are really concerned that they're gonna find the maths aspects of computer science hard um, but typically, that isn't what students struggle with. Um, so they're worried about you know, finding maths hard. But from, from what I've seen, at least, is that yeah, most students actually are fine with maths. Um, and you know, we have lots of really great learning materials to help bring those maths skills up. So normally, it isn't an issue. Um, but where I do see near enough every student struggle to some extent is becoming an independent learner and adult by extension. Um, so for many of you, if you do go to universities, it will be your first time away from home. It'll be the first time that you're responsible for every aspect of your life. And so you know, that includes you know, all the, the fun stuff of doing chores and making sure there's food in the cupboards and, and all that stuff whilst also having to time manage um, your own time independently and you know, making sure you're still attending lectures and progressing on assignments. And like all of that, I think, can be quite difficult to begin with. But again, it's one of those things it is it is surmountable um, and you know we have lots of um, great societies and we have a great cohort at Lincoln that helps everyone get through that as well. Um, so another thing I want to touch on you know is universities you know right now I've just been talking about what it's like to study computer science and uh, games computing um, but that's that's just a part of university right universities are a bigger entity and there's a lot more to do than just study on your degree as well um, and so that's one of the things, you know, if you if you do go to uni is to, to make the most of that experience, right? Um, and that includes 
um, basically seeking out all the opportunities that are there. Um, that includes societies. So again, at the University of Lincoln, we have some fantastic societies. Um, we have a really active computer science society that kind of, um, you know, they organize hacks and game jams. Um, and they also, you know, organize like assessment support sessions where they all work through stuff together. Um, and then we also have some, some you know, entertainment focused societies um, as well. Um, and then I've put here research. So near enough, every single lecturer um, at the University of Lincoln does research as part of their job, right? So they will be researching different aspects. Um, and so typically, you know, that, that research can be really interesting to students, right? Like, so if, if I'm looking at accessibility in games, there might be some students that are really interested in diving in further into that aspect. So, you know, make sure you seek out the, the people that are doing research you're interested in and see if you can collaborate with them, ask them if you can work on a project. And typically, you know, people are more than happy to, to have people help out. Um, and then lastly, expand your project. So at university, you know, you, you will make, um, you know, different tools, games, projects, etc. Um, make sure you actually expand them whilst you have the, the opportunity to, right? Spend extra time uh, polishing them up and making them kind of look as good as they can, because then you're going to leave the university with a really good portfolio of work. Um, I hope you found that useful. Um, as a quick little overview of what it's like to study computer science at Lincoln. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me at khx at lincoln.ac.uk. Um, I'm more than happy to talk about any of the different aspects of either our courses or uni life in general. Um, so yeah, thanks for listening and I'll catch you later.